Well, good morning, Highbury. I am Emma Woodhouse, and I'm here to tell you all about my very exciting reading plans for this month. So as you will all remember, I had literally no time whatsoever for reading during the preparations for the Taylor Weston wedding. And what an amazing wedding it was! Anne looked just stunning, Mr Weston was absolutely charming, and oh my god, the cake! Okay, I admit it, I did try a tiny bit of the cake, I took a cheat day for it, it was worth it, it was so delicious, just don't tell my dad. The Westons are now the cutest newly married couple ever, and they have even started their own joint booktube channel. You can follow them at Randall's Reads. After the wedding, I think with all of the emotions, I just got caught out in a bit of a reading slump without Anne to bully me into our buddy reads. Just kidding, Anne, obviously I love our buddy reads. But that is all about to change. This month is the month, I can feel it. Your girl is going to be back with a vengeance, and I can hardly wait for the wrap up. So as those of you who follow me on Twitter and Instagram, at Handsome Clever Rich, will know, I have been spending a lot of time lately with my dear friend Harriet Smith. I absolutely love this girl, she is just the cutest, sweetest person you could ever wish to meet, and you should definitely go follow her at A Natural Daughter. I cannot believe we have lived so close together for so many years and never got to know each other before. Fortunately now we are making up for lost time and together we have been cooking up some lovely little plans for the next few months. Most importantly we are going to be meeting up every single day to buddy read a huge list of books that I'm so excited to share with you. So Harriet is also a total bookworm too, but so far she is mainly focused on more like gothic romance type novels, which obviously have their place. You all know that I love a good guilty pleasure and Radcliffe Reed. Definitely don't tell a certain gentleman at Donwell about that because he would never stop teasing me, but there is such a huge gap in her reading of more like serious literary works, and that is something that we are going to address. Thankfully, I have had the privilege of growing up around the wonderful Donwell and Hartfield libraries, with the influence of the lovely Mrs Weston as well. So I was able to put together the perfect list to fill in that gap for Harriet. Fortunately, there are a lot of these books that I have been so intending to read for such a long time now, and I've just never quite got round to it, so this is the perfect motivation for me to pick up these books as well, so we can experience them together both for the first time. So we are calling this read-along the Highbury Reading Project because we would like it to have a real community feel to it. We have created the hashtag Highbury Reading Project for it, so if you would like to follow it on all of our social media platforms you will be able to find it very easily with that. There are going to be contributions from Randall's Reads, and also Mr Knightley has said that he is going to be weighing in with his thoughts on his Twitter at I cannot make speeches. I always think that's such a cute Twitter handle for somebody who literally does nothing but make speeches and lecture me about things, that he just won't listen to my views on that. Mr Knightley totally does not believe that I'm going to finish this list, but we are going to prove him wrong. Our new clergyman, Mr Elton, is getting involved too. He has his own channel, at Thy Ready Wit, so you can follow him as well. We are so happy to have him on board. And the Bateses have also let me know that Jane, my old friend Jane Fairfax, is thinking about trying a couple of these as well and writing about them on her reading blog, A Letter From Jane. Well, the more the merrier! Anyway, wow, so much rambling. Time to get down to the list. First on the list are Shakespeare's history plays. Obviously we're both pretty familiar with these and I have heard them read aloud many, many times on a winter evening, but I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to really get to know them in detail, you know? I want to be able to quote them easily and I think this would fit in very well with our other history reading later on this month, so I'm really excited about reading this. I've got an edition here annotated by Samuel Johnson, so that is sure to be very enlightening. And when we finish this, we have also got his Lives of the Poets to read as well. Next we are going to read A Father's Legacy to His Daughter by John Gregory. I am very curious to hear what he has to say on the all-important topic of matrimony. After the big wedding last month, I am keen to hear the bells ring again for another friend, and I might even have a little idea who that friend might be, but I will keep quiet for now because I don't want to jinx anything. After that we are going to keep on the same theme by reading a work by Wet and Hall Wilkes, a letter of genteel and moral advice to a young lady in which is digested into a new and familiar method a system of rules and information to qualify the fair sex to be useful and happy in every state. Wow, that is quite a title. Fortunately the actual book is pretty short. Also thinking about conduct for young ladies, we have got Fordyce's Sermons for Young Women. Mr Elton very gallantly said that neither of us need the lessons that this book contains, but it's just one of those books that I've heard a lot about and I feel like I ought to have read by now. To complement these three, next we are going to get a little bit controversial and read A Vindication of the Rights of Women by Mary Wollstonecraft. My dad is not sure about us reading this book because of the author's scandalous reputation, but I think it's always good to hear both sides of the picture. 
Following that, we are going to read Letters on Education by Catherine McCauley and Letters on the Improvement of the Mind by Hester Chapone. It seemed fitting to include these on the list because they write about young ladies learning about serious topics, including via the use of reading, which is exactly what the Highbury Reading Project is all about. Next on the list is The Children of the Abbey by Regina Maria Roche. I know, I know that goes directly against Hester Chapone's advice and is not exactly in the same category as the others on the list, but is such a favourite of Harriet's, she is on a mission to persuade everyone in Highbury to read this book. I have never picked this one up before myself, but Harriet was so keen for a reread, and as she's reading so many of my suggestions, I thought it would be only fair to fit this one in. I thought we could slot it in around the middle of the month to give ourselves a bit of light relief, so I'm keen to see what Harriet loves about this. Following on from that, we're sure to be in an emotional mood, so I thought it would be a perfect point to tackle some poetry. Harriet hasn't read much poetry at all, and I confess it is not my favourite branch of literature. But we have had so many wonderful poets in recent years that it's really time to dive in, and the whole point of this project is to challenge ourselves and come out better informed. So we are going to read Cowper's translations of the Iliad and the Odyssey, and some of his tales as well. Then of course, what kind of a reading list would it be without any Milton? Paradise Lost is such an important work. And obviously I haven't looked it over before, I just maybe wasn't focusing enough to appreciate it fully in depth. I'm sorry Mrs Weston. When we are done with that we are going to read some poems by Crabbe, then we're going to read Marmion by Sir Walter Scott, and Lyrical Ballads by Coolridge and Wordsworth. There is so much more poetry we could be reading, so if there's time at the end of the month, we'll come back and read maybe some Byron as a reward. Moving back into non-fiction, we are working on some artistic projects at the moment, so we will be looking at Gilpin's essays on the picturesque. Then I think it will be time to move into some proper history reading. Mr Knightley has loads of recommendations for history books that he says are really interesting, although this is the same guy who reads the agricultural reports for pleasure, so we shall see what they are actually like. Anyway, he says if we want them, always so doubting, he is going to lend us Oliver Goldsmith's History of England and Robert Henry's History of Great Britain. Just quite a few volumes there. That should take us to the end of the month, but just in case it doesn't, we could have a go at some of the more classical histories as well. So that is the full list of books so far for the Highbury Reading Project. I am so excited to get started on this as soon as Harriet arrives this morning, and if it all goes well, we will continue with further books next month as well. There are just so many worthy reads out there for young ladies. If you have read any of these books, please tell me about it in the comments, and if you would like to read along with us, that would be amazing. Remember to like this video if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel Handsome Clever Rich and press that little bell icon so that you don't miss this month's amazing wrap up because it is going to be a big one. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram. At the moment on Twitter I am sharing some of my absolute favourite literary quotes and riddles so your contributions to that would be fantastic. And on Instagram I am posting regular updates of my portrait of the beautiful Harriet Smith so you can check in with that project on there as well. I love you all so much, thank you so much for watching. Bye!